Legend of Keepers is a mix of dungeon management and roguelite, as well as a hint of turn-based RPG mechanics. You play as a dungeon master who has joined the Dungeon Company, looking to work your way up the company ladder and become the pinnacle of dungeon keeping and hero slaying. In this video I will be explaining the mechanics and the premise of the game. I wouldn't usually do a video like this, but the game is quite a bit to take in at first, so it should help you decide if you want to buy it if you haven't already. Or if you do own it and you're finding it a little bit tough, hopefully this will help you pick up a few tips to get through the dungeons a little bit easier. Though before I get into it, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, or you might wind up being sold as a rack of rancid meat to one of the monsters. So to explain the menu and the basics, there are three dungeon masters and to unlock them all you must reach at least level 6 with the first one to unlock the second and then you have to reach level 6 with the second one to get the third one, so that's pretty basic. Before you enter any missions with these, be sure to go to the talent tree in the bottom left of the menu and apply whatever points you think might be beneficial to your playstyle. In terms of masters, you have Maug, the slaveholder, Sariel, the enchantress and Lyra, the monkey engineer. They all have unique attacks, abilities and special traps, as well as the composition of their monsters in their dungeons are a little different. Maug has more orcs and skelly boys, Sariel has more elementals and nature based monsters, and Lyra has a lot of mecha monsters which I found to be really cool as they can gain a shield and have very interesting ways to buff each other. On top of all of this you also have artifacts which are items which fit in these slots. You can only have 5 per mission maximum though you can swap them out if you have too many. They can be very useful and combo with your current monsters, or they may be a hindrance. Though that is the roguelite way though isn't it really, you never know what you're gonna get. That covers the main menu and artifact UI, but before we get into the dungeon, I realise this is quite a lot of information to take in. So here, have a 5 second break with a picture of my cat. Moving on, you'll pick one of three dungeon difficulties which will give you a set reward. This can range from a random rare item, an artifact, a monster or a trap. There is also the off chance you may be offered a master bonus which can change their stats, resistances or damage output. It'll also give you an idea of what range of gold you might get for beating it as well as if there is a resting area which helps the heroes in various ways or if there is a disaster which helps you with various spells and events. Then once you pick which one you would like to do, you will enter the preparation phase. This will allow you to place traps, set up your monsters, and also get an idea of what the hero's strengths and weaknesses are, and this part is essential. And when I say essential, I mean essential. Always check the hero's stats and skills, and I mean always. You can do that by clicking on them, or you can just hover over them. The basic ones are health, morale, power, and speed. Health is obvious. Morale is how you can cause more damage per 25% of it they are missing, and also if you empty this bar, they will flee the dungeon, meaning you don't even need to kill them. Power is how much damage they will do, though it's rare to see a buff to this at the moment, and speed, which is how quick they will get a turn, and this also determines who attacks first. You then also have a range of elemental stats from fire, ice, armor, nature, and air. These determine how much damage will actually go through to that hero. If it's a 0% resistance, then it will be normal damage. If it's 100% resistance, they won't take any damage from that element. And if it's minus 100%, it will be double damage from that element. Always pay attention to these, as it will make or break your dungeon in some cases. The next thing that you need to pay attention to is the hero skills themselves. Some heroes may only have front attacks. Some heroes may only have back attacks, but the thing that you want to look for is the element that these attack with. If they have for example 3 heroes all with front attacks that are physical, don't put a monster that has minus 30% physical resistance. Unless of course that is the strongest one you have with that resistance, in which case, well, good luck. My final few pointers for looking at their skills is make sure you look at their unique abilities and buffs. There are some heroes which can alter your monster placements, and some may even benefit from giving themselves or allies a shield and some may heal their party after a fight or even restore morale damage per turn, so you should bear these in mind. But again, always check the elemental stats, they are in my opinion the most important part which will make or break your dungeon. If you do not counter them, or you do not organise your monsters properly, they will just slap the monsters aside and go straight to the master and kill you. In terms of what monsters work best for dungeons, it really depends on your playstyle. You might want to chip away with debuffs like burn or poison, or you may want to just straight up damage with physical hits. There are many ways to use the monsters, and the best way to learn how to use them for your playstyle is practice. 
And for the final part of this video, have another five second break with a picture of my cat. So the final part of the game that I'm going to talk about is also important. It's the week by week events. The first thing that will happen once you beat a dungeon in the week by week events is that if your monsters are beaten in that dungeon, they will then lose motivation. If they reach zero motivation, they will then need to recover and will be out of action for quite a while. To prevent this, some of the week by week events will give you an option to regain motivation or you can see the therapist if they are available and again that will also give you an option to get back more motivation. Making sure that all your monsters keep motivation above zero is important as you don't want to find out that half of your monsters are now out of action because they died in the previous dungeon. A little bonus tip is if you don't happen to be lucky and you don't get any kind of motivation gained through the week by week events, you can actually put them in the garrison and when they stay in the garrison and you do a dungeon, they'll regain motivation just for not being used. However, this is only the first part of the week by week events. What kind of events you get after you've dealt with the motivation can vary. These can be again either useful or a hindrance depending on what you actually get. The week by week events will happen before you do your first dungeon and also after every successful dungeon that you beat. You might get huge pots of gold, blood collectors, monsters fighting over a hairbrush, monsters looking at human pornography which is why my discord name is now Naughty Orc, and uh, you may also get trainers and engineer events to upgrade your monsters and traps and various other upgrades slash buffs and equally bad outcomes. I've not gone too far in depth with these events mainly because I feel it would lessen the fun if you haven't bought the game already but there are a lot of random outcomes. Once you beat all the missions you will get two new game modes for the masters, Ascension and Endless. I haven't gone into these too much myself yet but Endless as it says on the tin, well it's Endless. The whole aim is to see how far you can get before you lose. Ascension is 20 levels long, you try and climb as high as you can to beat all of the levels with each one having its own nerf attached to the master or your game. For example, the first one is each dungeon pays out less gold, meaning you have less to train and upgrade your traps or even just to buy more monsters. Though again, I won't cover these too in depth as I feel that if you get that far, you'll most likely understand the game anyway. But that just about covers Legend of Keepers and how this game works on a very basic level. Hopefully this either helps you make up your mind on the game if it's for you or not. And if you already own it, hopefully it will give you some kind of knowledge that you didn't have before. But that's it for this video, so I will see you for the next one.